six. Mo Vaughn gives it back to Woody Williams. The single that brings in John Valentin. Game tied at three. Bottom of the seventh. Nobody out. Sox threatening. Mike Benjamin. The sacrifice bunt. Williams. Nice pickup. Guns down. Darren Bragg at third. Bragg can't believe it. He has to be held back. Bottom of the eighth. Still tied at three. Vaughn first. No more. No more. Garcia Parra gets around on this one. The shot out to left. Two run blast. Number 18 for No more. Sox go on to win at 5-3 to three the final. How low was Derek low before this win? Well, he lost his first seven decisions this year, his last two of last year before. After a ball four induced exile at Yankee Stadium, packed house, no score, extra innings. Willie Randolph for the old timers game busts out the whooping stick on Tommy John. Much to the delight of Bobby Mercer, a game winning homer for Willie. Then Willie stepped into his regular job on third base coach in the game against Albert Bell and the White Sox. Facing Irabu in the second. Bell up the middle. Derek Jeter fields. Pirouettes fires and gets Albert at first. No score. Todd at one in the fifth. Runners on the corners for Maglio Ordonez. Ordonez. Flies one to right field. Paul O'Neill makes the catch. Robin Ventura. Here it comes. Here's the throw. Ventura with a nice one-handed hook slide. Gets Fruit Cup. Socks up two to one. Up four to two in the seventh. Runners on the corners for Mike Cameron. There are your runners on the corners. That's Mike Cameron facing Darren Holmes. Sends one to Tino who comes home. But Norton makes a nice slot as well. Socks up five two. And the White Sox go on to beat Joe Torre on Old Timers Day. And the Yankees six to two. The White Sox four through seven hitters spoiled Old Timers Day. Albert Bell, Robin Ventura, Greg Norton, and Maglio Ordonez combined for seven of Chicago. Here's Greg Vaughn. Drive right field with distance to the wall, at the wall, that ball is out of the wall. Number 37, Greg Vaughn, the home doctor. And that would tie Sammy Sosa, unless Sammy homered against the Mets. We'll show you that in a bit. Bottom of the fourth, tied at three. Tim Bogar throwing error allows Tony Gwynn to score. Top of the sixth, five three Padres. Bogar lines to center. Steve Finley misjudges, but he's still able to make the grab. And Moise Salou would tag on the play from third, so the Astros trailed five to four. Bottom six. More Houston problems. Vaughn pops to shallow left, and the ball pops out of Ricky Gutierrez's glove, his second error of the day. Vaughn goes to second. 6-4 San Diego. Trevor Hoffman on for the save, winning run at the plate, and Hoffman gets Moise Salou, his 41st consecutive save, dating back to last season, and San Diego wins 6-5. You know, just as impressive about Hoffman. But the Reds are trying to find some reason for their most recent slump, so... Blame it on the travel. The Reds arrived in San Francisco Friday morning at 4 a.m. to play in their fourth time zone in four series. And then Friday promptly lost to the Giants by 10. Never underestimate the importance of a good night's rest. Reds and Giants in the afternoon this time. Jack McKeon's Reds trying to snap an eight game losing streak. Giants a man on. Reds leading nine to six. Jeff Kent. Two run home run cuts the Reds lead to nine to eight. Giants down to their last out in the bottom of the ninth, trailing by one. Barry Bonds pinch hitting does what a pinch hitter is supposed to do. Out to left center, bounces up, ground rule double, puts the tying run in scoring position. Reds call on Danny Graves to face Charlie Hayes. Hayes, turn the fan off. Reds hold on to win this one nine to eight. Reds have been streaky this season to say the least. They lose 11 straight, they win 15 of 16, then lose. 4-2, to to Manny, Manny Ramirez, Ramirez. he's already homered, and he hits this one out into left center field. Brian Hunter can't reach it. David Justice scores, 5-2 Indians. Two batters later, Indians load the bases for Travis Fryman, the fly ball deep to center. Brian Hunter almost falls down, but he makes the nice diving catch. Jim Tomey scores on the sack fly, Indians up 6-2, top of the ninth. Indians up 6-4, Mike Jackson pitching with Tony Clark on second, facing Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez, single to center, the Tigers gamble. Clark is being waved around, here comes Lofton's throw to the plate. Alomar the take, Clark is out! What in the world are the Tigers doing? It was a big mistake because a Baroa double made it 6-5, then... A swing Tying a run on second, the grounder to short, it's an out. Mike Jackson's 25th save, Indians win at 6-5. to five. Bartolo Colon goes six innings for his 11th win, but he... ...for the M's and the O's. Eric Davis on hand, 
Much to the chagrin of Jeff Facero. Two run shot, 17th of the year. He's got a 13 game hitting streak, does Davis 2 1 Orioles. Tied at two, top of the fifth. Scott Kamenicki back from injury, first start since the 22nd of May. And Joey Cora takes him up the middle. Come on down, newly signed Joe Oliver. 3 2 Mariners. Cora, two ribbies in the game. Two batters later, a man on for Junior. Rips one deep to center. Hammonds, Jeffrey. On the track, comma warning. Bottom of the fifth. Orioles still down 3 2. Two men on for BJ Serhoff. Rips one deep to right. Jay Buhner on the run. Nice running catch. Bottom of the seventh. Mariners up 4 to 2. But Jeff Facero in trouble with the bases loaded and his manager pacing. Serhoff swinging. Serhoff 0 for 4 in the game. Mariners win 4 to 2. It's only the second loss of the second half for Baltimore. Francisco Cordova against Ryan Cresco. It's one deep to center field. Deep and good. 15th in the year. Braves lead 1 0. <clears throat> Pirates lead 2 1, bottom of the seventh. Turn award. Pinch hitting up the middle, off of Tony Graffinino's glove, and past Andrew Jones in center. Andrew not exactly cruising after that ball, would you say? Finally collects it. Ward goes home with a pinch hit inside the park home run. How about that? Pirates lead 4-1. Top of the eighth, still 4-0. 4-1 Pirates. Klesko representing the tying run. Looks at Jason Christensen's pitch for strike three. Pirates hold on to win. 4-1. Position at right, getting the Wrigley fa Field fans all fired up. Bottom of the first. We're scoreless. Lance Johnson down the left field line. Todd Hundley. Oh, he's no catcher. He's an outfielder. Great grab by Todd and manager Bobby Valentine saluting Hundley for the effort. And it's been a ton of effort on Hundley's part. Sammy would strike out looking in the bottom of the first with a runner on second. Bottom six comes down one zip. Jose Hernandez. He had a ball game and a half. Fair or foul? Fair ball. Nearly killed the guy with the floppy hat there. Home run for Hernandez is 16th. Get one of three hits for Hernandez on the game. The tie at one is for the Fanny. Got the floppy hat and his baseball. Bottom of the eighth. Cubs now down 2-1. Runner on first and one out. Glenn Allen Hill pinch hitting against John Franco on a 3-0 pitch. I believe he has gotten out of town. The home run for Hill. Franco blows the save opportunity. And this fan will be looking for a long time for that baseball. The Cubs win 3-2. The Mets' six-game winning streak is history. Go. And there's Nephi Perez against Matt Morris. Cards up 1 0, bottom of the first. Perez drives one to right center field. He'd pull up with a stand up double. Let's keep track. That's a double. He'd be stranded at second. Top of the third, 1 0 cards. Mark McGuire at the plate. Look out, Jamie Wright. Hits one deep to left. But for some reason, the Rocky Mountain Air holds it up. Bichette makes the catch. Big Mac 0 for 2 with 2 walks. Bottom of the third, back to Perez. Rips one into the right field corner. Takes a funny bounce in that odd-shaped corner. Perez motoring into the third base with a triple. He now has a double and a triple. Bottom of the fifth, 2 on rocks. Runners on first. Perez at the plate, bunting. Morris has trouble with it. Perez. Gets a base hit out of it. So what does he need for the cycle? He needs a homer in the bottom of the seventh. Needing that homer. Perez. Got it. Into the second deck. And on top of it, it breaks a 2-2 tie in the seventh. Perez, the first curtain call of his career. And Colorado wins 5-2. So the Rockies even up their home record at 500 for the first time this season. Going on Friday, bottom of the third, Darren Dryford at bat. The big swing grabs his right shoulder afterwards, but stays in the game. Top of the fourth, D-backs already with two runs in. Dryford just a bit outside. David DeLucci scores from third. Devon White is at second. He's trying to score. Here comes the pitch, and he is safe. D-backs score five in the fourth. Dodgers down 5-1 in the fifth. Dryford batting again. This time a little bit better. His first career home run is gone. Cuts the D-backs lead to 5-2. Dodgers trail, 5-3 in the eighth. Man on third, two out. Trip Cromer, the hard grounder. But watch the dive and then the throw to first. Andy Fox digs it out. D-backs beats the Dodgers 5-3. The final former Dodger, Omar Dahl, beats his old team. You see nice froze, 79. Matt Walbach. In the sixth, drives one to left field. Shane Max got a shot. Shane Max moving. Shane Max didn't get it. 
Tim Salmon would score. Mike Sweeney's close, but no good for the tag. Anaheim up 5-4. Now Sweeney up in the six, facing Pep Harris. And he ties it with the drop over Paco Martin. Dean Palmer comes across to score. It's all tied up at fives. In the ninth, Terry Collins looking to the bullpen for the save, and Hal Morris pops it to center, but Jim Edmonds is there for the bucket catch. Angels win it by the final of 6-5, and... Go a game up on the Rangers. Tim Salmon had three hits and scored three runs. Mike Sweeney went three for four with a double and a home run, driving in two runs for the Royals. Athletics, losers of four in a row in Tampa Bay. Art Howe not pleased. His team trailing 4-1 in the sixth when Jason Giambi takes the 2-2 pitch. Deep over the left field wall, a two-run blast his 15th. Cuts the lead to one. D-Rays lead 4-3. Then pitch hitter Kevin Mitchell delivers a run-scoring single to center. Giambi crosses home plate. We're tied at five. Bottom of the eighth, score still, still tied at five. Quentin McCracken on second, and Aaron Ledesma takes the Kenny Rogers pitch up the middle. McCracken scores to make it 6-5, D-Rays. They hold on for the win, 7-5. Giambi was three for four with four RBI. Facing the Marlins. Runner on first for Rico Bronya. Crushes the Hernandez pitch to right field. Two-run shot. Bronya's 15th of the year. That ties it at three. Next batter, Bobby Estelea. Just called up from the minors. He should have come up sooner. Back to back, Jack. His first home run of the year. Phil's 4 3 lead. Kurt Schilling piling up the strikeouts. Top of the seventh. Dave Berg. See ya. Schilling struck out Berg four times in this one. Top of the eighth now. Game tied at four. Marlins with two on four. Cliff Floyd. Down the right field line, just fair. Derek Lee scores. Marlins take the 5-4 lead. Bottom of the eighth, runner on first. The pitch in the dirt. Mike Redmond blocks it. Rico Bronya tries for second. Called out on a close play. He's not happy. But the Marlins hold on to win at 5-4. Schilling does his part by striking. Top of the ninth, tied at three. Go ahead, run at third for Orlando Cabrera. Cabrera. Grounds it up the middle, but Fernando Vina, the nice stop, the turn, gets the out. Still tied at three. Bottom of the ninth, still tied at three. Telford facing Burnett. Burnett says, you know what, it's late enough. Let's go home. Right field seats, second home run of the game, 24th of the season. He celebrates. Brewers win 4-3. Expos now have lost nine of their last ten. Burnett. Going three for four in his second two-homer game of the season. He leads the team with.